going to go and continue on with what God was talking about this morning, but just approach it from a, a different angle in which God began to show me. Um, we found out that there was a seed coming, and the Bible says in Abraham's seed, he says, and in thy seed shall the nations of the earth be blessed. And we found out that we are blessed because we receive the seed of Abraham. Amen? Are, are y'all with me? We're blessed because we receive the seed of Abraham. And then we go, and what's funny about that seed, if we go to Galatians, and Galatians says something very interesting. I, I said it this morning too, but I'm just going to say it right now for time's sake just to go. Um, it says in Galatians 3, they did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? But faith come by what? Hearing what? The word of God. Amen. And we say that seed, and we find out that God's word is the seed. And we, it wasn't by the law that you and I begin to be transformed. It was by faith. Amen. And I want to make sure we, cl we, we clear this up. And then we read in Galatians 4, it says, God has sent forth his spirit of his son into our hearts, crying out, Abba. So the word, well, the, the, the word, the seed that we call the word that's going to bless all nations, amen? That seed is that, it's not by the law, but by faith. Faith can come by what? Hearing, amen? And hearing, and when we begin to hear the word of God, it's going to, it, according to the word, it's being sent into our heart, amen? And what's being sent into our heart for by the Spirit it's going to have us crying Abba. And it makes sense because in Romans it says that your spirit shall bear witness with his spirit and it shall cry out what? Abba. Abba Father. But there was something that God began to deal with me about that um, in, when, when it comes to following Christ and understanding. And Christ said something that was very in interesting. He says that he was the image of the invisible God. And I want to make it clear on when we are following Christ, we are following the seed, the word of God, which that's in our side of us is crying our Alba. And what's funny is that when we receive that seed, it's like grace. It, it, it's, a, it's a new birth. There's a, a man, it's a new birth when we receive that seed because now we go from, from not children to being back children. And now we're, we're, we're back the children of God. Amen. But what's interesting about that situation is that he says Christ is the image of the invisible God. And I thought about image, I think about mirror. And a mirror casts a reflection of he who's looking in it. So if Christ is the image of the invisible God, now what, then who are we following? We're following the image, which is the mirror, which is the reflection of God himself being made visible through Christ. So he would, Christ, you know, you hear it all the time, but Christ is the mirror in which we are called to look in. But watch this. But why are we called to look in it? Because in him is the fulfillment of what we were called to be. I foreknew you, predestined you, that you be conformed into the image of my son. That Genesis may be fulfilled. So Genesis is fulfilled because God comes down in the flesh in Jesus Christ, who is the image of the invisible God. That image. So when we look into the mirror, when we look into Christ, we are seeing what we were called to be. We are seeing what we were supposed to be since the beginning, before sin took place. Amen? We're seeing, and, and, and I'm going to tell you, of the re that's why when you, this morning, when we are celebrating, I'm saying celebrating the blessing of God, you're celebrating the seed of Christ that's producing in you the fulfillment of God's word. What word? What he said in Genesis, let us create man in our image and after our likeness. Everybody understand? So I'm following Christ. What I'm really following is a mirror. 
that's reflecting that's that in, in, in the mirror is 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 reflecting the image in which I was called to be. Everybody with me? I, I, I want us to get this. I, I want to take my time that we that we understand this. It's reflecting Jesus Christ is the image in which you and I were called to be since the beginning of time. Before we started identifying ourselves as being, I mean, no, in the beginning of time when Adam and Eve was born, there was no black, white. There was no identity, identification in Jew. Or, there was no Jew or Gentile. See, that's why I love going back to the beginning because when you go back to the beginning, you begin to realize that Jesus being the seed, what he came to fulfill uh, uh, is to take us back to the purity, the authentic, when there was no, there was no Spanish, there was no Haitian, there was no Creole. It was just the Son of God, and out of him came the woman of God. And in them two were all humanity. Amen? And what's interesting, why is that so important? Because when you start looking in the mirror of the image of God, when you start looking at Christ in the Word of God, revealing it to us the mirror, then it's not revealing a mirror. And that's why I said to you all earlier that <coughs> we get to the place where the gospel began to become like what we wanted it, what we want. And you're following a gospel that is about what you want, therefore there's no change in you. But the gospel was, the true gospel was about what God wanted. It was about the establishment and the fulfillment of God's word. He never did away with his word when he said, let us create man in our image and after our likeness. God is watching over that word to perform it and it was performed in Jesus Christ. Amen? Are y'all with me? Okay. It was performed in Jesus. But, and, and this one, he kind of showed it to me like, I thought it was strange how God was showing it to me, is that, let me see, Fritz, stand up for a minute. Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father. Me and the Father are one. He said, I become a mirror. What does, and I, hold up, I, I kind of came down too quick. Let me read a mirror because I thought, he said, I became a mirror. Now watch this. A mirror, I looked up the word mirror, a polished or a smooth surface as a glass that forms an image by reflection. That forms an image by reflection. So he says, I'm the image of God that forms an image by reflection. In other words, when you see me, I'm reflecting the image of God. I'm, I'm, when you see me, you see the Father. I'm reflecting to you the image of God. So when you see me, you see the reflection of God through me. That's why he said you can see, when you see me, you see the Father. You see the reflection of God through the image of Jesus Christ. I'm the mirror. So when we accept Christ as being saved, now he's the mirror. So I'm following him. He's the mirror. And while I'm looking at the reflection, guess what? Our image is being shaped in me. Amen. And what's funny about it is, come, come here for a minute, Jess. Come here for this one minute. That's why it's so important that I, I'm in fellowship in this image because now I can be used to reflect the image to her. The mirror. Reveals an image that is reflecting an image. So now, because I'm in fellowship with him, now she gets to see the image, reflect of the image that I'm in fellowship with to, to her. And we become the image, reflection of the image of God on earth through Christ Jesus. Everybody understand? This is not a black thing. This is not a white thing. This is a godly thing. And we are trying to make it everything that's why you can't add you to it we're trying to make it everything other than what god made it and when you take the image you taint what it begins to develop satan tainted the image and you know what the jesus said he said your father is the devil but watch what he said but when you go convert one you make them too why because when you go convert one they don't they see now a perverted image of uh, 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 your father and now they become two times which because they never seen the original if I understand, when you begin to add the wrong thing, those behind you now see a, a reflection that is 
but perverted. Do we get it? And that's what Satan wanted. That's why he wanted a little leaven in it. And thank you all. Thank you all. And that's why I love this part. In Galatians, Paul was saying, then that changes the job of those who are preaching the gospel. And I, then I understood what, what clearly what Paul was saying. When Paul said, I want to hold up. Paul said, my little children, in whom I labor in birth again until Christ is formed in you. He says, I'm laboring in the word to show you the word, the reflection of God. So what, what, is he, what is he preaching for? What is he doing? That Christ be formed in you. See, that's all a, a pastor should. When he is laboring, he is laboring. And you know, a woman on to about because they use some some Bibles use transition translation as um what's that word? Um no? travelling. Um she's going through birth, she's laboring that Christ be formed. What is what, what that means? I'm birthing life, I'm laboring to push forth life, a mirror, a reflection that Christ may be formed in you. I'm laboring to push forth the thing of God. Because how many know when you labor, you're bringing forth life? So I have the seed, but I'm laboring to bring forth the divine, the godliness in me. I'm laboring in the kingdom that Christ may be formed in you. Because what's going to be formed in you is what you see in me. Amen. I'm laboring. That Christ be formed in you. But let's look at how it look a little bit. Turn your Bibles to Philippians, the fourth chapter. See, Paul and them had an agenda upon them. That's why Paul would say, follow me as I follow me as I'm following the image. And when I'm doing what he tells me to do, I'm laboring in the kingdom. I'm pushing forth life that Christ may be formed in you. I want you to see how important it is to follow Christ. And then who you are following must represent Christ. Because whatever you begin to follow can begin to be formed in you. I never forget it. Um, there were, I said this before and I'm going to say it probably a hundred times that when I went to a church one time and, I, and I, when I went to the church I knew the pastor they was, it, was, it was service was great but I was noticing that they were imitating some things that I saw from a church on television. I saw so many similarities that caught my attention. And I found out later, I found out that that was the nephew of the pastor. So therefore, and he actually set up under that pastor. So what was in him was formed. What was in him was the Christ form that he was duplicating from sitting up under his uncle. Now watch this. But when I was sitting there, God asked me an interesting question. He said, but what if his uncle erred? So that means if I begin to error, then if you're following me, if I error from following Christ and you follow me, then now I'm laboring to form something in you other than who I'm following. If I labor, if I turn from Christ and begin to preach my color, and I'm talking about blacks and politicians, then what's going to be formed in you is you're going to walk out here thinking that because that because you are black you are special and great in God that's going to be formed in you because that's what you're following everybody understand if I shift it a little bit and I move it toward gifts and signs and wonders then you'll walk out here finding your identity in the gifts and signs and wonders and you will think you're being but what's been formed in you is how you can speak tongues and how you can lay hands on the sick and how you can and that is not a bad thing that's a good thing but yet that cannot become before the blessed 
And we find out this, this, this is morning, what's being blessed is Christ. Christ in me is the hope of glory. Y'all better hear that. Christ in me is the hope of glory. The seed of Christ. He is the seed in which all nations are blessed. It is Christ in me. That's the book. A seed in you has a harvest. Amen. Christ in me is the hope of glory. We all fell short of the glory because we all had sin. But Christ is the redeemer from sin. Now Christ in you is the hope of glory. No longer I live, but Christ liveth in me. No longer I live, but Christ liveth where? In me. And the life I now live, I live in what? I live in faith. And I love the part in, in Galatians, I mean, yeah, Galatians where he says that not by, do you think you receive the Spirit by the law or by faith? You receive the Spirit by faith. The life I now live, I live in, not by the law, but by faith. The life I now live, I live in faith. In Christ Jesus. Faith in who? In Christ Jesus who gave his life for me. Faith come by what? And one thing we found out, if the faith come by the hearing, and it's about the spirit, we found out that God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying out, Abba. So we find out that the faith of the spirit that's been sent into you has brought you back to Abba, Father, to a relationship. Not to religion, to a relationship. The spirit in you is not bearing witness to no relationship. I mean to no religion. It's, bear, it's not bearing witness to a Baptist. It's bearing witness to what Jesus came to do. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. And there is no other way back to the Father. So when the spirit of God is inside of you, it's bearing witness to Jesus. What the word of God came to do. And that's why if the word of God is inside of you, it's crying out Abba. Why? Because Jesus came to bring you back to the Father. Now that's grace. Now, watch this truth. The behavior part of it, you got to follow the word. Let the word be a light to your feet. Why? Because now I need a mirror as a child to see how I'm supposed to be formed and grow up. I'm saved, but I don't know how to act. Y'all ain't hearing me. I'm saved, but I still, don't get me wrong, I'm saved by the gift. Remember now, the gift of grace is the baby. I, I've been born and I didn't do anything to get that. But now truth, because the Bible says the seed was full of grace and truth. Now I'm following truth, and truth is a mirror revealing the reflection of God. The image I was called to be the fulfillment of God's word, which he's watching over it to perform it in your life. So when people see you, they see God. The Bible says, for whom the word of God come in, they call him little Jesus. Would that make sense that they call him little Jesus? Well, who the word of God? Why? Because the word is the seed. The seed is producing the image and likeness of God. They call him. That's why when they look at the apostles, they say, oh man, these disciples, they act like Christ. They act like Christ. They act like Christ. Well, they are acting like the one they were following. And guess what? And Jesus formed himself in them. So when you saw them, you saw God. Amen. But let's see how it look a little bit. It's going to be an ironic place where we're coming. Philippians 4, chapter. Let's start at the sixth verse. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Be anxious for nothing. Look at somebody say, Be anxious for nothing. Where are you headed? What? So if I'm preaching, I'm laboring, I'm travailing that Christ, that what? Christ be formed in you. So if I'm laboring and Christ be formed in you, I don't want you to be anxious. Watch what, this is going to be so powerful. When you say, keep reading. Watch this. I never saw this like this until God began to show me about Christ, that the pastor is preaching that Christ be formed in you. And now I understand why he's saying be anxious for nothing. Go ahead. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, he said in everything, in communication, and supplication, waiting, patient, 
everything. He said everything. Don't be anxious for anything. But why is he saying this? Keep going. And with thanksgiving. With thanks and be thankful. Go ahead. Let your request be made known to God. Let your request be made known to God. We found out this morning that David request to God was he wanted to build the temple and God said to David this morning that you know what it's a good thing you want to do it but you're not the one going to do it go ahead and the peace of God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding which surpasses all understanding why is there a peace that's surpassing all understanding when you are not anxious for nothing and you and you're being waiting why is there a peace that passes all understanding in this keep going will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus it's going to guard your hearts and minds through Christ because Christ knows what he's forming in you I got that boy I was like see Christ know that he don't want you to be anxious for nothing because you you might make some decisions that move you out of the form out of the position of being formed in his image but if you wait patiently on him, if you, I mean, if you're not anxious and you pray and you supplicate and wait with thanksgiving, that to see what God says about it, because whatever God says about it, you're going to have peace because it's going to, why, why? Because it's going to keep you in alignment with the form, with Christ being formed in you. It's going to keep. In other words, pray, don't be anxious to go get that job. Don't be anxious to get that money. Don't be anxious to do certain things that might be good. But the bottom line is it may take you out of position of Christ being formed in you. And you won't have no peace in it. You won't have no peace in it because the reality of it is you're out of position. I heard the song say, stay in position. I love that last man. I, I, when I, I said, oh my God, I see what he's saying. He's saying, guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. See, you following Christ is going to guard you from making what? Bad decisions. God is going to guard your heart and mind from making decisions that do not fulfill him being formed in you. And when you're not anxious and you are praying and you are in supplication, when God says, if God says yes, you have peace that passes all understanding, even though it might be a storm coming. Or why? Because you know you are in a position to be formed. Even if something comes at you, you're going to feel good. Why? Because you understand it must be a part of God's process in me. If God tells me to go, not the, like this morning, I told the man of oh God, the chair was right here. I told him to go here. He wanted to go here. He wanted a shortcut. But he had to leave. Thank God he had to pray and in supplication he was not anxious to get to his destination because God had another role for him to go but in that role God had him go that there was peace that passes all understanding on that role because whatever was facing him you were going in a pathway that what that Christ was going to be formed in you that means whatever trial and situation that you're being faced when you are in position is helping Christ be formed in you see God, we, we got to get there See, he says, now I got to grow you up. I got to grow you up. I'm, I'm laboring. I'm laboring that Christ be formed in you. So I can't let you just come sit down. I must send you this way right here and let you be tried. By, think it not strange when trials come to try your faith. Well, the trials are coming to do what? To reveal what? What's in you that you may exchange what's anger in you for what? The love of God that God may be formed in you. The journey is for God to be formed in you. How do we know this truth? The Bible says that he took the children of Israel the long way. And he took them away. But you know what God's ultimate plan was? His ultimate plan for the children of Israel was to set them in the midst of nations. That they may know the God in whom they serve. So what the way he was taking them was going to be causing God to be formed in them that the nations around them will see say oh I know your God by the way you conduct yourself but at the last step when they was about to cross over watch this they came back with a false report and said uh, we are but grasshoppers in our own eyes he said I'm tired of you I cannot form me inside of you you see yourself but as grasshoppers but yet I conquered Egypt for you. 
yet I open a seat for you. Yes, I, how do you see yourself if you follow me? I'm the cloud by day and the fire by night, but yet you see yourself as weak. You see yourself as inferior. You see yourself as insecure. How is that possible if you're following the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who is forming Christ in you? You have to see yourself as Christ see himself. Say, I'm taking you. And the way we took him this morning, he was met with temptation because Michelle was trying to sauce the brother. But because he preached Christ, and all he talked about was Christ, what Christ? The one he's following. The one that's a light to his feet in the Lamp unto his path. The one that's forming and he's listen, and because he's sitting on the ministry that's not trying to form his gifts in him. Not trying to form because gifts, watch this. The Bible says this. That was it the law that caused miracles or was it by the spirit? The spirit is what brings forth the miracles. And the spirit brings forth the miracles in times that God wants to be for, not to show off man, but to glorify God. When a time that people want the Spirit to bring forth gifts to show off man. That's why God says, well, many of them are going to be led astray by signs and wonders. Why? Because they're going to be following man instead of the Spirit. God is not there to entertain people with the Spirit. He's there to transform people because of the Spirit. Amen? Man, this is good. He said, I want, Pastor, I'm laboring that I want to see Christ formed in you. Follow me as I follow him. Because I want to see him formed in you. I want to see you start walking like him, talking like him. I want to see Christ so formed in you that when they see you, they say, you, you a Christian, you act just like Christ. Well, there's neither Jew nor Gentile. He said, I'm taking out the Jew and the Gentile. Well, there's neither male or female. He said, they're not going to even know you by your gender. Because goodness has no gender. Kindness has no gender. Compassion has no gender. He said, it's going to be Christ in you, in you all. It's, they going to see Christ. Why? Because that's the seed that you receive. Who do men say that I am? He said, thou art the Christ. Then he was said, the son of the living God. Thou art the Christ, the anointed one. To do what? To be the sons of the living God. He said, why do we know that's true? Because he said right here, and God has sent forth his spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, that you may cry out, Father, because I have given you the seed of sonship. Though you must be baptized, you a daughter. Thus, though you must receive the Pentecostal experience, you a son. Your spirit is crying out, Abba, Father. And guess what? Because you are following the Christ, you are now starting to look like the Christ. The man was on the right-hand side of Jesus. He started looking like Christ right there on the cross. Why do you persecute him? He has done nothing wrong. We deserve it. He's looking like Christ. The other one rejects some like darkness. They reject the word that would form Christ in them. So we, so we can't be anxious for nothing because Satan can use your anxiousness to get you out of position. And to get you to do a good idea or whatever, but in doing a good idea because you were so anxious, Christ wasn't formed in you they start seeing your flesh. So on the way of you doing the task, you done slept with about 15 people, you done did this, you done destroyed more souls than you call yourself trying to save. See, I know, there's a young lady, I remember I told you, I told you she had a, God gave her a dream that many souls was going to try to follow her to Christ. But then, in the same dream, Many of them got turned off of Christ because she didn't let Christ be formed in her. And when she got upset and when she got angry, she would show off in her flesh and turn off the very ones who were following Christ because she didn't let God be formed in her. God is formed in. 
when something is being formed, it's, it's being shaped. He formed man out of the ground. Yeah, we got to get this. Come on. When something is being formed, it's being shaped. God formed man out of the ground, did he not? Uh, uh, isn't that what the word says? He formed man. That means he went into the ground and he began to shape it. He said, I, I want to form, I want to shape you into the image of Christ. Through what? The word of God. What word? That I'm laboring day and night to bring, that word is bringing forth life. I'm shaping you. And that's why the Bible said, think it not strange when trial. God says, I use trials to form you. I use fire to form you. I know I could have took you over here to sit down, but I took you the long way to form me in you. And now, watch this. And the things that I revealed to you, I had you covered the long way. That's why he said, I give you peace. He said, you ought to have peace when I take you the long way. Because you know that's the way I took you. Why are you afraid? Why would the children of Israel be afraid of the giants? Why would they be afraid of going hungry? Why would they feel to be afraid of lacking something if God is the one that took them in that way? Is he not a provider? Is he not a keeper? Is he not a protector? He's taking you away so he can show you who he is. And in showing you and I who he is, he often shows us how we like to handle things. Or run from things. Or not face things. He sent you to that job. He sent you to this ministry. He like, man, I was talking to one of my sons. We were talking to him there. And he said, man, she going through a lot. And I was talking to another one of my sons. They told me, this person going through this. And they like, man, they feel like this and they feel like that. And I told my son, I said, well, ain't nothing I can do about that. Why? If they abort the child, if they abort the pride, and the ones who act like that are the first one to say, I know God sent me there. I got him. But as soon as the fire came, as soon as adversity came to form, to form Christ in them, they said, I don't want to be formed. Get your hands off me, God. I, I don't want that. I, I take me out. I'm getting off this cross. I'm just not going back to that church no more. I don't like how don't people treat me. I don't like how they won't acknowledge me. I don't like how they don't recognize me. Ah, you, ah, you need to die. For the one that you are following sought no reputation. The one that you are following said, I am your example. He said, I am your example. I got on my feet. I got on my knees and I washed your feet. Do what I have done. I am your example. What are you saying? I am the one that knows how to wash away somebody else's past. I am the one that didn't seek no reputation. I didn't come to be served. I came to serve. If you follow me, let me teach you how to be great. We have a thing. People like to say, I'm not going to stop you from being great. Thank God. Let me be great. Let me serve you. Why? Because the one I'm following was a master servant. For the Bible says he always did those things that pleased the Father. Are we, are we getting this? Well, we're going to get a little bit more. Keep reading. Verse 8. Uh-huh. Finally, brother. Finally, he said, let me talk to you, brother. Let me talk to you because I know you want to follow Christ. You're kind of anxious in your prayers. Almost get, you're kind of anxious in what you want. Getting... And I got to wind your hands because you, the things you want going to put you out of position. Wait, I want you to have patience to pass this all understanding and be able to trust that God is with you and the pathway he take you. Now, come on, brother. Let me talk to you some more. Go ahead. Talk to us, brother. Whatever things are true. He said, now, I want you to, if you're following me, stop being tossed to and from about what's true or false. He said, even though I took you this way, know that you're following truth. I got you, children of Israel. I got you going through the wilderness, and I know you don't know how to fight. I know you don't know you're not ready to represent me yet. But I promised that I told Moses to tell Pharaoh, let my people go that they may worship me. 
let my people know that they may worship me but the true worshiper shall worship in spirit and truth he said now let he said i gotta take you the way that's gonna teach you how to worship me in spirit and truth because you've been walking in your flesh 24 years you've been walking in your flesh 15 years you've been walking in your flesh 40 years now let me take you away to, that you can now worship me in spirit and truth now what you got to know is even though adversity is before you i'm taking you away of truth it might look like a dragon there but truth is you're a dragon slayer it might look like there's giants there but truth is you a giant slayer it might look like there's some things that that's going to defeat you but the truth is i have given you power over all the works of the enemy that's the truth and nothing shall hurt you so even though i have took you through a pathway that looked like you're going to be destroyed but stay on truth truth says no weapon formed against me shall prosper and every tongue that rises into judgment shall be condemned that's the truth i want you to say it is written when you are faced with falsehood I want you to learn how to say it is written when you are faced with falsehood. You are a failure. You ain't going to be no good dad. You ain't going to be no good wife. Those are lies. So my brethren, no truth. Because you can't. If I'm, forming, if I'm forming Christ in you, the spirit of truth. You got to know truth. God is good. The devil's a liar. Let us know the difference. You got to know truth. Now God know, even when he's seen you, that you're going to be like, oh, oh, I don't know. Can I, can I overcome this? What we forget is, you were not anxious for anything. You didn't even want to be a pastor. You didn't even want to, you didn't even want to do that. Truth is, God sent you. And truth is, God says, I be for you. So can you confront adversity with truth? So he says, okay, first, let me help you with truth. Go ahead. Whatever things are noble. He said, whatever is noble. No, that stop talking about why me. Why not? Whatever thing is no. He wants you to be noble. Stop crying about the adversity and be noble to it. Matter of fact, how, do I, how can I be noble? God, I think you found me worthy to suffer for your name's sake. Not whining and crying. Be noble about what direction God has took, taken you. Go ahead. Whatever things are just. Whatever's just. Know that even though, y'all got to get this, even though they talk about you and they try to bring up your old past, know that you've been justified. And know that whatever is just, God going to bring it to pass. Okay, 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 Egypt, keep on following. So, because whatever so is just is now... Because when God was hearing the cries of his taskmaster, it is just that you get reap what you were sowing. So follow me in this miracle situation that's been done by the Spirit. That I may show that God may show you that He is just and swallowing up your enemies. And if God is just by showing you He can swallow up your enemies, then why are you sitting here in the promised land talking about you but grasshoppers when you saw God justified in the midst of your enemies? Well, how does it look today? Well, didn't grace justify you? So why are you sitting there letting the enemy tell you that you would never be saved, that you ain't no good, that you're still what you used to be? You've been justified. Therefore, you've been glorified. Glorified what? Christ in me is the hope of glory. You now, because now Christ is in you, being glorified in that situation. They don't see you, they threw, they threw you in the fire, but they look in the fire and found the Son of Man of God sitting with you. While you were going through the process of being persecuted, the Son of Man was walking with you. They said, boy, 
I know that's a creep. I know Christ with her. Look how she's standing up. Look how he's talking and acting in the midst of all that foolishness. Keep going. Whatever things are pure. He said, whatever's pure. That's a good one. He said, because if you're going to follow me, you got to know only the pure heart can see God. Whatever thing that is pure, some things you're going to see that's not pure. You got to know what's pure. A pure, pure means authentic, original. But since you're following the one who is the original one who designed you to be formed into his image, you got to know that's not pure to lie over here. Like Pastor Bob, Paul Barber say, it's not pure. Know what's everything that is pure. It's not pure taking no side deal. Amen? What's pure? If it's not pure, that means it's corrupt. If it's corrupt, it's taking you out of what you were called to be formed in. A lie is corruption. That's why the Bible says a little leaven will corrupt the whole lump. But I'm so glad I'm following mercy and grace and truth that I'm being washed by the word, regenerated. My mind's being renewed. Amen? Go ahead. Whatever things are lovely. Whatsoever thing is lovely. You got to know what's lovely. We like to call things lovely that ain't lovely. And that was the loveliest. Oh, that was, that, was, that, that was such a lovely love story. No, that was a lust story. There was nothing lovely about what they were doing. There's nothing lovely about murder. There's nothing lovely about rebellion. Know the, the, this is what he's saying. He said, know these things. Know whatsoever is true. Know so whatsoever is noble. No, so what's up? He said, you gotta, if you're following, if you're following me, know these things. How you gonna follow him and not know what's truth? How you gonna follow him and not know what's noble to God? How you gonna follow him and not know what is just? He said, no, to keep on. Whatever things are of a good report. Whatever that's a good, know a good report from a bad report. You are a failure and you're never going to be nothing. Is that a good report or a bad report? You're in the hospital. You're getting ready to die tonight. Is that a good report or a bad report? No, it depends on what God says. Because I'm absent from the body present to the Lord so if God says I'm bringing them I, I heard Paula say that God told her I'm bringing that guy home was that a negative report no why would it be a negative report if somebody saved somebody, they were the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, and they brought him home I didn't say it wouldn't be sad because you're going to miss them but it's not a bad report no what's the problem You know, the, we all know what's noble Read some more. Go back up. We all know what's no, somebody. We we trying to figure out is that person is this noble or not or what? Is this just for real? I don't know if this just. I don't. I'm not feeling it. Let me tell you something. If you sitting there talking to somebody who's slander somebody else, is that just? You ought to know that these things are not. That's not just for you to be sitting there partaking of a conversation. Or opening your mouth and slandering somebody else. That's not just. The Bible says don't do it. It's not noble to roll your eyes at your sister because you don't like what God is doing for her. It is not a good report. When God had told you to go a certain way and you come back saying we are nothing but we are but grasshoppers in, their own, in our own eyes, that's not a good report. If God told you I'm going to cure you 
It's not for you. And the doctor said, well, you got cancer and it's uncurable. That's not, I, I do not accept that report. That's, that's in total contradiction of the truth. And since I believe in whatsoever is truth and God's word is truth and God told me I'm going to be cured, I'm going to be healed. Therefore, your report is not a good report for me. It don't, it does not, it's not in alignment with the word. You broke. You ain't going to never have no money. You're going to be always covered. But God says, I should provide all my, you, I should provide you with all, I should provide all your needs for my riches and glory. That report don't line up. You're going to hell. You know, <laughs> wrong report. Wrong report. He said, listen to what he said. He said, know these things. Listen to what he said. Know these things. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. The word know derives from the word knowledge. Have knowledge of the word of God to know these things. Why? Because you've got to be able to confront the truth. You have to be able to speak the truth while you're on the pathway. See, these things we know is Christ being formed in us. But we're too busy with this new gospel what I want, what I'm going to get, when I'm going to get this, when I'm going to get that, that you don't even know when you're being noble. We don't even know when it's the truth. People got the gospel. They don't even know if that guy, what is the gospel? Well, the Bible says he gave the ministry of reconciliation. What does the gospel, what does the gospel say about stuff? The gospel says, God said, it rained on the just as well as the unjust. In other words, you can get, you can have stuff. But the, what's truth? God says life does not consist in abundance of things we possess. There, you're not closer to God or any God more godly because you have stuff. Now, can God release stuff to you? Yes. God is not mad. God don't care nothing about you being a millionaire, billionaire over and over again. That God is not. As long as you don't worship it as long as you don't as long as you understand that's not what's forming you that's what's not shaping you he said know these things if you listen to the things he's saying aren't they shaping an image whatsoever is what truth right truth. Jesus I am the way the life and the truth it's when you know what's truth the Holy Spirit of truth is forming somebody who can walk in truth they see God. What? What's the next one? If there is any virtue. Okay, watch it. Now go back up. He said, what's up the truth? If there is anything true, noble. Nobleness is of God. To be noble today, is that's, that's God forming you. The world ain't noble. It's a falsehood. When you think the world better be noble, it's a falsehood. Hmm. The next one. Whatever is just, whatever is The pure. world don't know what just is. We ain't know what just is. We thought just was getting, I'm, I'm going to get back, I'm going to get you back. I'm going to, just, we thought just was what just, what we thought it was. We thought just was being justice. What we thought was justice us, was us being happy. Some of us, you might, your flesh might not be happy based on God's, what he perceived as just. Because God may not kill your enemy. And since you needed to be, since he justified you, you ought to want to be just with someone else. Come on, somebody going to get that. Since he justified you and we, whatever we reap, we sow, you ought to want to justify someone else. By what? Being merciful. Because remember when we said, remember the word what we found out earlier? We did not receive the spirit by the law. So why are you looking for punishment? Oh, somebody going to get it. Why are you looking for punishment because somebody did you wrong? We did not receive the spirit by the law, but by faith. Don't you believe the word of God can transform you as he, them as he transformed you? Have faith in the word. Go ahead. What everything is lovely. Everything lovely. Go ahead. What everything is of a good report. A good report. Go ahead. 
If there is any virtue. Y'all, y'all got to get that. We gotta, watch this. This is so good. If there is any what? Virtue. Listen to the word he used. If there, he said, if, if there be any virtue. But I want you to remember this. Remember when the woman of, with, the, with the issue of blood was following Jesus? And she humbled herself. And the woman, she had an issue. Everybody say issue. She had an issue of 14 years, right? It was 14 years, a blood issue, a life issue. But the Bible says she touched the hem of his garment. And her issue dried up instantly. And the Bible says that Jesus knew that the virtue. Anger didn't come out of him. Nobleness came out of him. Truth came out of him. Kindness came out of him. Watch. She had been receiving a bad report from every doctor. But when she touched him and the virtue came out of him, a good report came from God. God said, if there be any virtue in you. He said, if you follow on Christ, the same virtue in him should be now in you. What did he say? Go ahead. He said, if there be any virtue, what? If there be any virtue, and if there be anything praiseworthy. If any, oh, I love it, don't you? He said, if there be any virtue, and if there be anything in you worth giving God praise, praiseworthy. Because it's praiseworthy when somebody walk in truth. It's praiseworthy when we walk in justice. It's praiseworthy when you walk in a good report. When you confront the enemy with the word of God and give a good report, that's praiseworthy. A lie is not praiseworthy. I'm going to mess us up. If what this word is true, then why we have a lot of people in the church praising Beyonce? Is that praiseworthy? Why do we have a lot of people saying that this is good? Does it, because to praise it means to give glory to who the author of it. For something to be praiseworthy means you're operating in a manner to celebrate what they have done. He said, if there be any virtue in you, in this work, if it's praiseworthy, is it praiseworthy? When you're with your boo and you all hugged up, is it praiseworthy? Can God get praise out of that? Is it worthy for God to get praise out of? Is virtue coming from what you involved in? Do the unsaved we found out last week that even the unbeliever, we quarrel with one another. We found out last week we shouldn't quarrel. In front of, we go to court with one another before the unbeliever. Is that praiseworthy? Is it praiseworthy to talk about your sisters and brothers? Is there no one, the last week he said, is there no one, is, is there no one, is there no one can judge that? Is there no one that has any wisdom? Can somebody act with virtue so this issue can be dried up? Can somebody act with virtue? What's virtue? Can somebody speak the truth? Can someone give a good report in this situation? Can someone be kind in this situation? Can someone be just in this situation? Why? So when they touch you, it can dry up the issue? Who are you following? If you're following Christ and Christ, if you're following, if the man and woman of God, God has set you up under, if they are laboring and travailing to be that way, Christ be what? Formed in you, then the one that they're laboring and preaching, if you are following, we found out this morning that you can't just, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. You just, but I'm going to say it anyway. You just can't be a hearer of the word. Let me read it. James 1 23. One who hears the word of God but does not act accordingly. One who hears the word of God and does not act accordingly does not move in alignment with the word of God. So to hear it, so we got a bunch of people hearing it, but are you operating in truth? Are you being noble? Are you of good report? If there be any virtue in you, 
in any what? Any virtue, anything praiseworthy. If there be any virtue in you, or anything praiseworthy in you, what's, what's, what's virtue? Truth. Good report. What's praiseworthy? Doing what God told me to do. But to hear the word, watch what it says. It says, one who hears the word of God, but does not act accordingly, is like one who observes his bodily face in a mirror. Here we back in the mirror. He says, it's like one who's following Christ, who's in the mirror, revealing the glory of God. But watch what happens. He's in a mirror. Watch what he says. But turns away and forget what he looks like. One who does not do the word forgets who he was called to look like. Forgets the image that the word, the word that you heard, but without acting accordingly, they didn't see the virtue. They didn't see Christ in you. They didn't receive the reflection of the mirror you were looking in. They didn't see. They saw you. Instead of the reflection of Christ in you. Because she was your friend, you ain't tell her the truth. Because that's your home where you ain't give a good report. You played it off. See, if there's no virtue, then an the issue cannot be dried up. It's Christ in you that dries up the issues, the answer to the issues of the world. And when you and I do the word, when we operate in truth, when we are not anxious, when we operate according to what God says, when we're willing to forgive 70 times 7, then somebody who has an issue are now can be in, we are now can be placed in a place to be sent to try up that issue. But in this false gospel, God can't send nobody because the so-called sons and daughters of God are in a workplace just thinking about themselves. Just think about their next raise, their next promotion, thinking about all that superficial stuff, like that stuff gave them life. Like God said this morning, that ain't the blessing. The Bible, Jesus said, this is what the scripture said this morning. The Bible said, wait, he said, Abraham, he said, uh, in thy seed, he said to Abraham this morning, I want to read it. What did he say? He said, in thy seed, Abraham, all nations shall be blessed. He didn't say seed. There's only one seed that's going to make you blessed. That's Christ. Because only one thing, bless me, happy, joyful. And the only thing going to make you happy is to have life. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Abundant life is to have virtue. And that word virtue, say it again, say it in the mic. This is what it means. Moral excellence. It means now you live a godly life. Godly. Godliness. Because well, who you are following is producing godliness in you. This is good. Got to eat it and digest it. Amen. He read. If there's any virtue or anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. He say what? Meditate on these meditate. things. Keep that word before me day and night. But let, me give you, let me give you another translation. I like another. He said practice. Practice telling the truth. Practice on these things. Practice. Meditate means to practice. On what? Giving a good report. Because what you practice that you're going to become good at. Practice being noble. Practice being just. Practice obeying the word of God. We got to practice it. Why? So we get good at it. So when God sends you into a room, people can humble them. When, they, when God breaks somebody down, they can touch you and you can feel the virtue come out of you. When you're being kind, when you 
when you're being kind because they are hurt. You can feel the virtue come out of you when you're being just and not judgmental. And that issue is drying up because the virtue. He said, meditate on these things. Right? Day and night. Keep the word before you. Stay in the word. That's where the word in you, Jesus, in you are the words that lead to eternal life. Meditate on those words so you can give somebody life. Eternal life. That they can withdraw from you the Christ in you. Christ in me is the hope of glory. He take me from glory to glory to glory. The image of God. Keep going. Verse 9. Uh -huh. The things which you've learned and received and heard and saw in me. Uh oh. Go ahead. These things you do. He says, I wasn't just preaching. I was doing those things. See, that's what I was doing with Jasmine. In other words, I'm following Christ. The image is being reflected on me of God. She's following Christ. She's seeing the image being reflected. And now, the things she learned, because if you're not a doer of the word, how are they going to know if God real? How are we following Christ and yet we're doing the same thing the world is doing? Read that part again. He said, what? The things which you have learned. He said, I've taught you. He said, I didn't preach myself. Am I right, man of God? He said, the things that you have learned, I, I didn't preach. I preached Christ Jesus. Go ahead. And received. He said, now, not only did you learn them, but you received them. The things that you received that was given to you. The word that was preached and you received it that was given to you. Go ahead. And you have heard. And you heard it. Go ahead. And you saw in me. And you saw in me. Do these things. You saw me put it to application. Some people get tired of, they may say, man, apostle, we talking about this testimony. Or talking about, you know, when he, his house was in, and when God told him to be still at his job. And apostle talking about how, man, no matter, I'm going to tell you something. See, and, 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 and Pastor Bobby, or Papa, you don't see them persecuted. You don't see people slander them. But you ain't see them move from their position. The things you learned. You have seen me sacrifice. I would like to be home with my wife every night too. So the things you learn, I'm, am I'm amazed at how many and sons and daughters I have there. That you can't, you're not learning nothing. You sit up under ministry and you everywhere else and haven't even learned the things to do the things that, that you've been learned here. To be diligent. I had somebody tell me the other day, they said, Apostle, uh, it was the day before yesterday. They was talking to this young girl, and they was talking to this, this girl, and she said, well, his wife don't go to the church, but I just love his wife because the way he always talking, Kara, I can see her. And she about, see, See, what does that mean? You ain't got to do it when they're there. You ain't got to be all faking when they're around. Because she was saying, learn from your apostle that when your wife ain't there, you ought to still speak with eloquence about her. You ought to still represent her like you. Why your wife ain't there, you in some other female's face. That ain't what you learned from your apostle. You didn't learn to lie, sneak, and cheat on your wife from your apostle. Do the things that you learn. When my wife, somebody said, well, his wife, why she ain't there? Why? He should be angry. Your apostle ain't mad because my, my wife right where I dwell with my wife according to knowledge. She right where she need to be right now. And when I go home, my house is in total peace. See, I don't know why God does things he do with me the way he did it. But if he did it for just this reason, for to show men in this church 
that you don't, that you can be, that you can love and talk about your wife and be faithful and cherish your wife so great that even when she's not around, others see how much you love her. That means stop faking it when you're with her. Acting like you're all crazy about her when you're with her, but when you're not with her, you talk about like she's an old ball and chain. Did you not learn? See, I don't, God will take your role just to teach you. See, I didn't ask God for no pastor's wife. Are you crazy? And I tell the men here, if you ever meet a woman, she tell my, well, God, tell her, I'm looking for a pastor. Run! She want a position. I don't want no position. I want a wife. Help me in the way I need to be helped. If I don't need to be helped here, when I go home, my house is a paradise of peace with my wife. I can talk to her and preach. Don't tell me I don't, she don't sit on this. Yes, she, yes, she do. She hear the word more than you do. She see it more than you do. Why? Because I have to live it around her. It ain't no church. It ain't about no religious setting. And see, I don't give the enemy no room to play because I'm always talking about my wife. It's funny that the only time you talk about your wife is when you're with her. Some people don't even know you married. You ain't learned that here. You didn't learn how to, you didn't learn here how to be late to come to church. You didn't learn that from Prophet Barbara or Pastor. You didn't learn how to be late to come to church. Rain, snow, sweat. You didn't learn from here not to hide. You didn't learn from the leaders here not to go to the high. If you learn, you learned how to go on the highways and hedges because every leader here go on the highways and hedges. So where did you get that from sitting at home watching the TV and chilling and eating Cheerios and sitting there playing? You ain't get that from your apostles. Where you get that from? Where you get, every time you're talking about God, it's about some business transition. It's about you trying to get, you ain't get that from me. Because what you got from me, I'm ministering to Winn-Dixie. Learn. And I got it from Jesus. It ain't me. I got it from Jesus. Jesus told, Jesus showed me one time when I was in the world, my, I would drive. Female called me one o'clock in the morning. She just got in from New York. She in Boca. I got roll call in Fort Lauderdale. I got to get up 545 to go to work. She said, I'm in town. Come see me. She about an hour and 30 minutes away. Ain't no way I'm going to tell God I won't ride 130. Mm. Uh-uh. That ain't the way he raised me. That ain't the way. He, you ain't get religion here. You ain't get tradition here. You came here with your religion. You came here because you didn't pay attention. Follow me as I follow. Paul said, follow me. You don't follow your leaders. Many of y'all don't even follow your leaders. You contest them. And that's why some of you all ain't delivered yet. Because you ain't following your leaders. You go everywhere but where you're supposed to be. You're trying to get deliverance over here. Trying to get deliverance. Just follow your leaders. If God sets you there, if you follow them, that's going to be deliverance. You can get sexual deliverance without going through a switching end if you just follow your leaders. You won't be so dedicated, you'll be so dedicated to God that you won't have time for those thoughts. You'll be able to cast them down. And, and if you're sitting, I don't know where they got, I don't know where you got this from. <laughs> I messed up. I'm going to hell. Oh God, I love you. I just, uh, I can't worship them. I can't praise them. You 
you ain't get that from me. You don't know what I'm going through because my praise is always the same. I always come up here and do my job. Right, you can't, you, you don't know what I went through this year. When my daddy passed, I was right here. Don't get me wrong, I love my father, but let the dead bury him. I, I, I got to keep pushing. My daddy done made his decision, he gone. I'm gonna miss, I still miss him, I still love him, I still go through my sorrow, but I'm not gonna stop doing the work of God. You didn't get that from here. Where did you get it from? You ain't get it from here. You know, that's just apostle. Some people get mad. You got people who done got married in this church. Them cats come to church Sunday morning, you won't see them no more. They ain't get that from here. They got that from what they really wanted. And I'm not talking about the ones who's on the battlefield, who's working, doing what God told them to do. I'm talking about those who's sitting home. I thank, I thank God for Nick. Nick, Nick, his wife came in the morning, come, come. man, send your husband. Send somebody to keep the house strong. Now nah, we gonna, no, Sunday is my day. I'm gonna come on Sunday morning with my day. That's the day I wash my clothes. Are you crazy? Where did you get that from? There is no sacrifice in you. There is no sacrifice in you for God. You didn't get that from here. Paul would talk the same way. He said, you Galatians, who bewitched you? You ain't get that from me. You didn't get that spineless walking with God from me. In this ministry, street ministry is a part of what our training. I don't see Ma. I don't see people come out twice your age walking in the sun ministry and you got the audacity to sit your butt at home may God deal with you a pastor trying to make you feel guilty yes I, I'm trying to get you to understand that you are out of order You know what they got? That's why I, I hate it when the pastors flip. What do you mean flip? You preached a gospel about stuff. And when the people get caught up in stuff and you don't get what you want, you flip the gospel. Then say to the people, that's all you think about is getting this and that. You, you better go. I can show you some sermons, some of your premier preachers who preach that they preached that garbage and when they didn't get what they wanted and they got to, got to do it, they flipped it and made the people feel bad for forming them to want stuff, but yet they preached it. And I'll be looking, I'm like, I can't believe he's saying that. Does he forget his sermons he preached about 10 years ago when he was sitting there talking about the people, talking about money coming now? Did he forget the sermons that he preached then right there? Now all of a sudden, he, now all of a sudden you want to now the people sitting there waiting for money to come and they don't want to do nothing and they giving and they and all they're giving but now watch this they giving and you like the fact that they giving but you tired because you got counseling session after counseling session and people in the church lives tow up because what you didn't understand give up that money sermon you was preaching don't change the heart don't change the heart I don't want to preach nothing but Christ Jesus and myself a servant. Why? Because that's the seed form. Because why? It's forming Christ in you. I see it. I see my price appreciation all the time. I see people, you don't understand. I, I see you. 
man, I see straight out soldiers. And then I get something, because they don't even, some of them, they don't even realize how far they have grown. How fast they have begun. Look, I see Christ being formed in them. In the way they compassionate. In the way they give. In the way that they're long-suffering. In the way that they're kind. They ain't running out, but in the way that they go straight to serve, I see Christ being formed in them. And then, you know, we got those who, they want to be real busy, but they ain't got no Christ formed in them. They always complain about this sister, that sister. You always complain about this brother. Where's the Christ formed in you? Well, I really don't know about Christ being formed in me because I only hear on Sunday. And by the time Tuesday come around, I'm starving from the word. So I'm snapping on my husband. I'm tripping. Don't know how to act. I'm sitting there. Boom, 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 boom. Can't wait to get back on Sunday. Why? So I can get another little dose treating, Christ, treating God like a crackhead. Like you a crackhead. A religious crackhead. I want to see Christ be formed in you. Christ in you is the hope of glory. And watch this. I no way speak as one who is perfect. I can, I'm like Paul. It is not as if I have apprehended. But I am pressing toward the higher prize of the calling of Christ Jesus. I'm going after him. So yeah, you can find, believe me, you ain't got to look, you ain't got to look real deep. You can find some flaws. You can find some, come here, Andre. You can find some things. Hold that. Like you, Jesus, walk. But you can't say I let go. You might have said sometimes it looked like he was hanging on. Looked like Pastor tripping a little bit. But you can't say I let go. Okay, Andre, come on back in here, man. Look at my God. Get all carried away, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Anybody in the church that found yourself going through some struggles but you kept on hanging on? I don't know why, why people run. Deborah, why they run? You don't see them no more. What, what, why do you run? Where, I ain't seen you. Ever. And then you want to get mad I ain't called you. Are you crazy? I've been preaching to you. I, I've been preaching to you over and over and over again. Can I, now I got to say what Jesus said. How long? How long, Lord? No more, no more, no, no more, no more guilt party, no more victim. I have preached Christ. You are victorious. You are not a grasshopper in your own eyes. You are a mighty woman and a mighty grand of God. I don't like the way apostle talk. I don't like the way prophet talk to me. I, he, and so I don't, I'm not feeling prophet no more. I'm not locked. You wimp. Oh yeah. You sorry wimp. Oh no, he did. Oh yes, I did. You spineless. All it took was. You to have a disagreement for you to bail out? Why would I want to go to war with you? Everybody that's been down, everybody, we got 3,000. God said, Apostle, you got too many in the ministry. Wait a minute, we ain't got nothing but 150. You got too many. Time for me to shake it up. Everybody that do this, to go back what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let people get offended I'm gonna stir up and shake up the ground everybody to go let them go because the next stage got to be strong enough to handle the next the next stage got to be strong enough to handle what I'm bringing God wouldn't do that you don't know your Bible you got to be Stand and see the salvation of the Lord. And I'm tired. 
I'm tired, sister. The same thing keep happening to me over and over. That church keep having people offend me over. Can I help you? Can I help you? Can you pass the test? God is not going to elevate you until you humble yourself and pay, till you get some virtue. Because why? Because you want to be a leader, but you're emotionally unstable. I know, I know how it is. And God has to stabilize you because you can offend somebody. Say, get out your feelings with God. I see Jesus being called a hypocrite, a devil, but I don't see him one time retreating. I'm going to go out that door, touch on the outside, come around, and get here. I'm not letting nobody stop me. I'm going to lay aside every weight and sense so he's going to set me. I'm going to run this way. Don't become weary and well. I know. Don't become weary and well doing for in due season. Well, it seemed like we've been doing the same thing over. The men's meeting is the same thing. I need something to entertain my flesh. Find you another church. Bye. He won't have to keep doing the same thing if you get it. You know what? I'm going to tell you something. Prophet Barbara backed me up on this. Am I right, Prophet? People be like, it's always the one. I don't go to the one. I used to go. Somebody told me just recently. Somebody said, I don't go to one body anymore because he's always preaching on relationships. You know what's funny? And the person who said it is in a messed up relationship. I be like, people, I'm telling you, people are crazy. They crazy. People are crazy. Every time I heard someone say it, watch their relationships. There was one person who said it. She cursed her husband out every day. But she said, I want to grow. The way she speaks to her husband is like a dog. But it was her husband that said, man, I ain't learning nothing over there. They all about, always talk about relationships. But his wife was just about, his wife was just about to cheat on him. I know he wished he might have stood up and sat down and listened to what God was talking about how to relate how to love how to endure we don't want to get it one thing you're going to deal with is people And since all humanity came from a man and a woman, we might want to get that right. Since God is expecting godly offspring, we might, might want to read Malachi. We might want to get right on how we deal with one another. We might want to stop hating on women, hating on women. We might want to stop men hating on men. When you hear words like envy, strife, and malice, that don't reflect to finances or health. That reflect to relationships. The first thing that happened when sin took place was Eve caused Adam to sin. That's relationship. And yet, we only want to talk about it. When Eve bit the fruit, the Bible says she passed it to Adam. She caused her mate to sin. Though we know God going to deal with Adam, but when we operate in sin, we cause another to sin. When we go in there, no one I got a problem with, we all got to be, we, we got to be, we can correct it. God, God is working on us. We'll be in the church and when you fall, you will go do it to a brother or sister in the world like God ain't going to be upset with you. And then when you come back, you act like you cared nothing about the soul 
that you were supposed to reflect the image of God too. That's not love. But since we don't want to preach on that, and I'm just preaching on me, I don't really care about the girl I slept with when I was sinning. In her spiritual condition, I don't even want her to call me no more. Do, do you know I was, at a, I was at a church and the sons, the pastor's sons, were sleeping with the women. And you know what they would do? After they sleep with the women and they run back to God, they would do, at least David got up. Somebody going to get this revelation. At least David got up after he realized what God had did with him. And the Bible says he strengthened himself. At least he went back to try to minister to Bathsheba. Not Bathsheba. Yeah, Bathsheba. Bathsheba. At least he said, now that I'm strong, let me go back. No, nah, you know what those brothers was doing? Tell, tell people, don't call. Put them on a crash course too. Don't call me no more. See them in church. Don't say nothing to me no more. I'm trying to get right with God. You trying to get right with God now? After you forced her to get an abortion? This is what happened. This, is what happened. this stuff was happening. You have no sorrow for the abortion. You have no sorrow for the young lady. All you saying is, God, I need you. I need you. I need you. God, God give me. A... Then you repeat the whole process over again and make the woman feel like she ain't nothing and she's so broken she's standing in the church don't know what to do crying to her other friends about how you won't even talk to her no more and how you made her feel like you loved her or cared about her and demons in there and I remember being in the press circle with all that going on and I felt the spirit of God come on and I just touched one and she on the floor riling like an animal. And the spirits start leaping from in there because that's how many unclean in there. And I'm like, God, what in the world going on in here? And then God said, let me tell you, it's time for you to go because he showed me leadership. This is when I knew it was time for me to go. He showed me leadership, take in the church. It was a bunch of young leaders and they picked the church up off the cement and started walking and putting up on the sand. He said, they don't want me. They don't want me. They don't want me. They want to they, they want, they want play house and put the foundation of the word of God on the sand. And some of them right now are so tore up and messed up. God says, leave. Left. Because once you fin, God said, if they don't want God, God, no, he'll tell you to leave. He'll tell you leave because he's going to give them what they want. Because it'll have been conflict with leadership. So he says, no, just leave. Told her, went to the pastor, said, I got to go. I'm going, God. I didn't even know where God was sending me at that time. I just, and I told him, then I told him I was just going to a park. Then I became the enemy of everybody because I told him, they're saying, you're trying to bring everybody to the park. I said, I just told him I'm going to a park. At that time, I didn't know God wanted me to go to no park and start no ministry. I'm just going out to the park to go do me. I'm going out to the park. You're trying to get these young people to follow you to the park. I don't want them. Please don't let them follow me to no park. I don't want them to follow me to no park. This is the, this the group. If God tells me to leave, I don't want them to follow me to no park because, no, that's foolishness. I don't see, I don't see some foolishness. Listen. You got to care about souls. I'd be like, God, strengthen me so much that the reason why I will never violate a woman, or you say, oh man, because I love the soul so much that it, it would break me to see me trying to break them. Amen? Don't feel bad if you had to get that revelation that it's about the love of God, not about trying to make your flesh be disciplined. Uh -uh, flesh, flesh, no, no. No, God, just give me your love, and love will make me de-discipline. I'm following you. I'm learning how to, anybody, we learn, how, we learn how to be noble. Say hallelujah. We're learning how to be truth. Truth. Say hallelujah. Say we're learning to believe a good report. Come on, y'all. We're learning how to be just. 
If there be any, say there is. Say if there be any, say there is. If there be any virtue in us, say there is. You better declare it over you. I got virtue in me. I got the seed of Christ being birthed, the behavior of Christ, virtue being born in me. You know how there's virtue in you? Because I've touched mom, I touched Jasmine, I touched somebody, and they were able to say a word that helped me with an issue. I saw some virtue in you. Can they withdraw from you at work? Because there's virtue in you. I was about to commit suicide. But I came in the elder's office. And God, because of the virtue and God had him stop doing his work. And he knew something was wrong and began to minister to me. And I walked out the office, joy in my, in my heart because suicide spirit had left because there was virtue in that office. He could have stuck to his business. He could have said, no, nah, I ain't got time. But because there was virtue in that office. See, I'm going to tell you something. God will try you. He'll watch you how you respond. Are you so, what are you committed to? See, to be committed, I'm committed through Christ. What, what does that mean to be committed through Christ? It means what Paula was saying this morning. I'm not going to... They might have to fire me if God tell me to do something because I'm not going to not do what God tell me to do because I'm there to reveal virtue. But see, I'm not worried about that because I found out, I've been working so many places, I found out God got you covered. See, sometimes even at our job, we be panicking about, God got you covered. He got us covered. The feds ain't going to do, they will not do, why? Because God got you covered. If they want to find something, they can find something. But see, when God got you covered, they can't see you. They'll be turning in reports, excellent, excellent, excellent. And you and their souls getting saved and delivered. That young girl need to know somebody got some virtue in her. I'm in the classroom. She need to know somebody got some virtue in her when she ran out to my, my father. I'm getting molested at home. I'm a reporter, but I've got some virtue too. Remember one young girl, I taught her in seventh grade. Man, and she was my little buddy. I remember in seventh grade, I remember too. When we was in ninth grade, no other senior. We go outside. She said, can I talk to you out the class? I said, yes. Out the class. She said, I just found out I'm pregnant. My heart like, bam. She said, the guy I'm pregnant from is in Northwestern. He a senior. And she was in ninth grade. Mom and daddy don't know. I ain't have no word. I just said, you don't hug nobody. I had to hug her at that point. She was crying. I couldn't worry about if somebody was going to see me. I had to hug her. She was, wow, there was virtue. She needed to dry up that issue. I had to minister to her. Let her know, baby girl, you got to talk to your mama. I had to tell her. I'm going to tell her the right things. I'm going to be noble. You need to talk to your mom. When I left, my heart was so sad because... She sat in the seventh grade class, eighth grade. She did not receive, neither did she learn. And I'm sitting there thinking, I know something her mama ain't gonna know. And tears like crocodiles running down her eyes. God, I need a word. Somebody at Jackson Memorial Hospital, need a word. Somebody works for Metro Day, need a word. Somebody at Miami Day Community College, need a word. Somebody at Victoria's Secret, need a word. Make you think about it. Somebody at. What's my. Coast Union, what it's called, huh? Space Coast, my old bootleg bank, need a little word. Somebody at Saks, need a word. 
if there be any virtue. And you sitting there talking about the job and position and status and raises and all. What's, are you crazy? Have you lost the blessing? The blessing wasn't you getting that job at sex. The blessing wasn't you getting that job at, 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 at Be Strong. The blessing wasn't you getting that job at, 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 at uh, Space Coast. The blessing was you received the seed of Christ's life. That's the assignment. We don't preach the assignment as the blessing. That's why if, you be, if they start firing people, you, they like, why are you, why you like, they like, why are you jamming? Because I'm blessed. You can't take away my source of being blessed. You can't separate me from being blessed. Because somebody going to be thinking about so. I mean, I heard about the man and woman couple who jumped out the window of the store just recently. Jumped out and committed suicide because they find that record, because they, they, they find that got messed up. They needed, they needed somebody in that room, that hotel, somebody in that building. Where was Jesus? That young girl cutting the wrist. Where was Jesus? Sitting there worried about who gonna be sitting there worried about where their husband at, who they gonna marry. Sitting there worried about blowing up in the industry. Like Paul said, all them dead people walking by you, and you looking to which one you gonna use, which one you can find that's gonna help you get that record deal. He dead as a dough now, but you wanna find out which one. God, make my eyes sharp like eagles. Make my ears wide open so I can be sensitive to the spirit. Because you are my provider. Do we believe it? You are my healer. And I got the best, I, I got the best for one okay in the world. I got the best retirement plan that will, oh, I got a retirement plan. Oh my God. Absent from the body, present from the Lord. The gates got pearls on them. Got a mansion with my name on it. No more sickness and no more tears. <laughs> and I have to say this because some people, I know some people say, that doesn't mean you don't want a 401 okay down here. That doesn't mean you don't want to make smart and let God wise decisions. You want to submit your plans to God. You want to have money because you don't want to go speaking tongues to your mortgage man. You got us out that go see him. That sounded good. What my what my eight hundred dollars? God paid it all. Well, until He paid that eight hundred dollars, your stuff gonna be on the sidewalk. Because, you know, people, people, be, people be crazy. They, do, they be like, they like, they, some of them, the Bible, they was crazy in the Bible too. Don't, don't think it's new. In the Bible, they was like, they were sitting around trying to wait for Jesus to come. That's why he came up with that scripture. That's why he said to them, people like to misuse it. He was saying that to those who were sitting around waiting for him to come. That's what he said. You don't eat, you don't work. He, we like to take that and apply it to everybody. And they might be working in the kingdom. And you trying to say if they don't eat, no. He's not talking to those. They weren't working in the kingdom. They were sitting there just waiting for God to come. Being busybodies in everybody's business. See, that would be impossible in the scriptures because the Bible says a labor is worth this higher. So you wouldn't be sitting there just waiting for Jesus to come and being everybody. You're supposed to be laboring. The harvest is great, but the labors are few. Let us pray to the Lord of the harvest that we may get more labors. So you're supposed to be busy. Why? Because you're following Christ and you know where he's leading you. And you want everybody to go. Because you know if there's 99 sheep and one is lost, you want to be able, God, let's go get the one. And there's a difference between one being lost and one walked away. Oh, come on now. Come on, come on. Because people be talking about that person lost. No, you're not lost when you walk away. The prodigal son walked away. He let him go. 
He knew he'd be back. Amen. He will be back. You just got to let him go. Come to the end of himself. God is good. Come on, give God some praise. <laughs> Woo! Man, this is the kind of word, I'm, I'm, I'm sure this is the kind of word that you want to kind of get and you want to listen to it when you're by yourself. You want God to break it down. You really do because when I listened to this word, it was a hard word for me to preach because I'm like, I, God was giving me the pieces and I was like, God, but as I preached it, he opened it up and opened it up more and I began to see what he was saying. He didn't like give it to me all at once, but I began to see that the power of this word this morning and today, understanding, you got to understand that you are the blessing. He blessed them. He blessed you with the seed of Christ. And then you got to understand in following him, there is virtue in you. And Christ is the image. He's the mirror reflecting the image of God upon you. And you are reflecting upon somebody else. Amen. You have purpose. And there's a part in that verse, if I can't read it, I'm going to go, I'm going to read it, I'm going to say it. He said, I learned how to be content. And then if you keep going, he says this, I can do all things through Christ. Philippians 4, 13, who strengthened me? I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. The one I'm following, we like to say here to add no more to me than I can bear do you believe that's true? Then stop letting what you see say you can't make it. Sometimes you 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 already got the deliverance. The question is, can you walk past your thoughts into it? You say, what do you mean by that? Meaning that the enemy is always throwing thoughts. You know, you you wish, you going you this, you that, you gay, or you gotta. He's always throwing thoughts. The question is, can you pursue past your thoughts and can keep doing what God says? Because what happened before when he had you was you would submit to your thoughts and begin to act on them. But Prophet Barber said something that's so wise. He told me one time, and it really helped me a long time, a long time ago. He said, man, the thought's not yours unless you receive it. The devil going to shoot it, but it's not yours. Unless you, he shoot thoughts at me all the time. Oh, boy, I'm glad y'all don't see the thoughts he shoot. Because y'all be like, Apostle, what in the world was that? He shot it. But see, sometimes we sitting there crying and all crying about a thought when that thought had no power to get an act. Instead of saying, God, yeah, he shot the thought. But it's not yours. It sounds like yours, but it's not yours. But it couldn't get the act. But the word of God is getting the act. How? Because I would have been over, I would have called her and went over there. But the word of God told me to flee you for lust. So guess what? I acted according to the word, therefore not fulfilling the desires of my flesh. I don't put no confidence in this. Amen? But I feel good about what's in me. The power that worketh in me. Because he got me. I remember one time I was, man, I was battling with, woo, when I was at the park, man, I don't know what thoughts coming, man, about this, and it was sexual thoughts, it was like, man, he was trying, I'm like, man, this stuff was crazy, and he had one of my daughters hug me, and I know it was God, she hugged me, she said, God said he trusts you, and when she said that, something broke, and I was like, I know what my problem was, it broke because I was trying to trust me, no, I trust God, and let God trust me. See, your problem, some of your problem is you trying to trust you. No, trust God and hold on to the fact that God trusts you. For he is the one who has begun a good works in you. He would not send you on the mission if he didn't trust you. He already know success. Why? Because when he sent you on the mission, he, God already saw the finish of the mission. He already saw the end of the mission. Your life has already been revealed before God. He's seen the end of it already. He does not, if we don't know this, he does not exist in time. 
that means he can see the finish and the end. That's why a lot of times God see the end, come tell you the end, you don't believe it, and then walk up and build your faith to believe what he has said to you that he already know. Somebody should see this. Somebody should got it. He came and told you when God said you get married, he already saw it. He came back and told you when you look undesirable, you look crazy, ain't nobody talking to you, but he said you be married. And what we don't have the faith to understand is that he already saw it. He's not guessing. He's not assuming. He saw it. That's why you want real prophets. Because false prophets will have you waiting for something God never said. But when somebody's a true, when Jesus said, in my father's house, it's so good, it's so good. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I wouldn't say it. I go to prepare a place for you, for you, for you. I go to prepare a place for you. How you know he's talking about you? Because you have, re- I came among my own, but they received me not. But for those who received me, gave me power to make you. How do you know your son? Because the spirit, he sent the spirit of his son into your heart. And you're crying out, Abba, that's my father. Oh, this is good. But where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And those who have not my spirit are none of mine. But because you have this spirit, how do you know you have his spirit? Because he's crying out, that's my father. Are we getting this? God is, he said, I go prepare a place for you. He already seen you. He already seen you there. Can, can, I, can I share something with y'all? When I, when I was in the bunk beds with my daughters, and God came to me in a vision. And in a vision, I had a, you know how when you go on a trip and they show you like, they say, they say Brazil and they got the pamphlet of Brazil. And they got, this is a true story. I know I don't tell people this is the truth. I saw a pamphlet. He gave me a pamphlet in the vision and it said New Jerusalem. He gave me a pep in the New Jerusalem. And the next night, I don't know if it was that night, and the next night, he came, he came back to me in a vision again, and he gave me an outfit of white linen. So I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> he can't lie. Oh, y'all. He already saw it. He already saw your... He come back and he tell you and, you, and you know what your problem is? Because you see something in the natural, don't look like what he saw, you start, you start giving up and quitting. God already saw Abraham have a baby. He knew the time. He knew the place. He knew the date, the hour, the second that that baby was going to be born. It was Abraham who had a problem with believing it. At first. God had already saw Jesus risen on the third day. It was Jesus' flesh that had a problem with believing it. Your name is already written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You just have a problem believing it. Hello? I know y'all like apostle. We ready to go. I know I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let y'all go. There was I saw it earlier. I didn't underline it. But you know, if you go, it was a place I read in the Bible in one of the epistles. He wrote that. Their names was written, in the, our names be written. In, he said our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. He wrote it. He believed God. He just simply believed that his name was written in the Lamb's Book. If you believe what God said, you won't walk through life afraid. Fear. You, won't be by, you won't be upset if they behead you. You won't be afraid. Well, the flesh will. I don't want my head cut off. I was thinking about that the other day, man. I would hope it'd be quick, man. Come on, you know. God is good. I don't see no visitors. Do we have any visitors? 
No.